we're going to talk today about predators, or these three lovely, mysterious animals which occur here in uplands. Um, hello. You haven't missed, we have, we've just started. So, we're going to talk about these three animals that reside here somewhere within the Upland County. We have the bear, the lynx and the wolf. We're going to talk a little bit about their ecology, what they do, where they are, how many of them are in uplands, what they eat, and how you guys can interact with them, look at how we can understand them, predominantly through use of tracks, which is the impressions and features left in the snow and soil by the paws. And we'll go through the importance as to why we use tracks as opposed to anything else sort of within the show. So we're going to start off with the bear. For anyone who hasn't seen a bear, we have a bear. Thank goodness that works. Good. Um, if you want to take the skin and pass that around, Jake. Just uh, The bear skin, as you'll notice, is long and brown. The fur itself can grow up to 10 centimetres in length, so it's very long. Right now, this time of year, bears are asleep. They're hibernating. They've got dens. They sleep through the winter because there's not enough food for them. So they fatten themselves up in autumn. If you cast your mind back to autumn, they were where there were berries everywhere. That kind of gives you a big hint as to what they are eating. The bear has a very interesting diet. People think they eat a lot of meat. They've recently looked back at the history of bears and found that the density or the amount of meat in the diet has dropped to about 10 to 15%. It used to be much higher. They hardly eat any meat now. And what they do eat is what the wolf doesn't eat. They basically eat what the wolf leaves. That's the bear. The bear is a big animal. You can see it's here. These aren't to scale, so I can't compare them. Hello. Excellent. So the bear we were just talking about is a big animal. We have this bear here. But I want to tell you how big a bear is. So to the shoulder, which is this point here on the bear, it stands to 135 centimetres to the shoulder. So for a bear, if you have a pet bear and you're walking, you have to kind of pet it like this. Bears can be bigger than that though. Some bears you'll see in movies, they'll stand up on their back legs quite a lot. They tend to do this in movies when they're being aggressive. This is not an aggressive behaviour. This is normally just so they can get a better look. But a bear like this, when standing on his back legs, like a man, will stand up to 280 centimetres. So I'm about 180, so it's me plus a metre. Oh, wow. that, that's pretty big. Um, I have seen bears in, I've not seen bears in Sweden, I've seen signs of bears in Sweden where they have left bite marks three metres up a tree. That's one of the ways they have of displaying how big they are. It's a competitive thing because they have territories. They live on their own. They are solitary, they, um, yeah, they don't like interacting with other bears if they have to, because food is important to them. So that's the bear. Yeah, as you can see, the bear has these absolutely gigantic feet. There is nothing quite as big as a bear when it comes to the feet in Sweden, Europe. What I have here is the bear's front foot, and it's very similar. I'm trying to remember which way around it is. I think this is the front right-hand foot. And you've got this tiny little heel pad on the bottom there. We'll pass this around in a second. Due to that heel pad being so far at the back, you, can, you can't always see that when you're like, looking at the tracks of bears. So, I'll tell you this now, the fun fact about the bear front paw is the only track you measure the width of. Every other track, you measure the length. Including the bear's back foot, which looks incredibly like a human's foot. So. We can now pass that around and have a look at the claws as you're going. They're really big, uh, as big as my fingers, and thick and black and strong, very much like pickaxe tips, which will give you a hint as they use them a lot for digging. So who knows what the bear eats most? I just said that meats, i.e. what the wolf doesn't eat, red meats, make up about 10 to 15% of their diet. And I said they eat berries in the autumn. What else do bears eat? Anyone got a clue? I'll come to you last. I know you. So, 
Okay. Yeah, so the bear eat a lot of uh, ants, like they dig up ant hills and yeah. their eggs. They take those big claws and they can rip open tree stumps to get to grubs and they can open ant hills to get to ants. And what they do in the summer, they'll dig to the middle of the ant hill and they'll just take mouthfuls and mouthfuls of ants and eggs. Very rich in protein, very fattening. It's really interesting how the blue whale eats krill and the bear eats ants. The biggest animals eat the smallest prey. So yes. Sorry? It, uh, more so in America than in Sweden, just for the native bee populations. But yes, they do eat sweet honeys. Again, that's the black bear as well, I think is the one that does that. So yes, so yes, we talked about, you can see the paw is massive. The bear's back foot is probably, it's about the same size as my boot, which is anywhere between, well, we call it a foot in England, which is about well, up to 25 centimeters, give or take. So that's kind of the bear's back foot. And they walk slowly. And when we're tracking, which is what we're gonna come on to near the end, all this information here, we tend to do that in the snow because the snow is a really easy surface or medium to look in. Bears you won't see in the snow because they hibernate, they're asleep. So that's the bear. Has anyone got any quick questions before we jump on to our cat? You said that meat is about 10 to 15 percent yeah. mass. What's, like, what's the total mass in, in white hands that they eat a day? A day? Or, or I know that they can eat up 180,000 ants a day. But in terms of what the kilograms of that is, I've not weighed an ant and I can't work it out in my head. Um, I don't know. I can find out, but... 100 that's... kilos of berries they eat in one day, a big beer. Wow. 100 kilos of berries. Cool. Oh, that's a point saying. Cool. Uh, worth saying as well, the bear in Sweden weighs up to roughly 250 kilograms. I weigh 75. That bear is three and a bit of me, three and a half of me. So yeah, they're not small animals. We're now going to come on to our smaller predator. Anyone know what? I've already said the name, so what it is? It's the lynx. Does anyone know the scientific, the binomial name for the lynx? Yes. Was it? Yes. Well done. Lynx, lynx. Very easy to remember. Fun fact: probably found by an Englishman or named by an Englishman. We're very lazy, we like to give things the same name twice. <laughs> if you notice on the links, we've got these lovely black tips to the ears. And you can all, I'm not going to pass this fur around because it's quite big. It's the full fur of the animal. It's, uh... So that's your native predatory cat. Look at how long the tail is though. None of you, it's about the same size as a normal cat's tail. So black tips to the ears and tail, and these paws, which we're going to pass around now, are very, very furry. You just have a look. Be careful with the claws on this one. They're very delicate. But you can see the pad is covered in fur. You can't really see the individual pads. This is because they aren't asleep this time of year. They are awake. They are hunting still. They they have the fur in between the pads to act like a snowshoe. They make their paws bigger so they can walk on top of the snow. These things, so being as big as this, they're not that heavy. They weigh about up to 21 kilograms, which is smaller than my dog. It's probably about the size and weight of a Labrador. Okay, so they walk on top of the snow. You see very, very fine, soft prints, which are very difficult to spot in the snow. And it's the only track which leaves this outline around it. Well, I'll put this out later and come have a look. And we'll also play with the sand pit and look at tracks there. So who knows what the lynx eats? Because that's a big question, which everyone likes. What does this animal here eat? It's yeah, rabbits. Absolutely. They're on the list. What percentage of its diet do you think is meat? I'll tell you, it's, they eat meat, but what percentage of their diet is meat? Higher? Up to 100% of their diet is meat. 
uh, they, they can't produce a particular enzyme found in meats, whereas the other animals can. These guys have to eat meat. They're called an obligate carnivore. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Rabbits is on the list. Foxes is on the list. Birds is on the list. The biggest thing that they eat, the most numerous prey item, thank you, is the roe deer. Absolutely. So you have your cat, which stands about this big, and then you have your roe deer, which stands comparatively about that big. And this thing, that's what it eats. And they are an ambush predator, which means they kind of get the jump on, literally, their prey. They will hide up trees and drop and catch, and they'll go into the back of the neck of the roe deer. They can also pursue over snow, because they don't sink like the other animals do. So these are very fast and obligate carnivores. Fantastic animals. As said, they have these paws with the fluff on. The paw is, that's fine, good. Uh, they have the paw with the fluff on. So the paw, the prints, try again. The prints with the pads is seven to nine centimeters, which is, a, which is that big. So that's how big the lynx paw is. With the fluff, looks about that big. They're that fluffy. So, that's kind of, oh, in uplands. There you go, that's the important thing. There are 63 lynx in uplands. That's a calculated number, but that's what they roughly work out. They do surveys and inventories every year. They worked out there's roughly 63 lynx in the uplands, uplands area. Before I go on to the wolf, anyone, any quick questions? Cool. Was it 1,200? Cool. Yeah, I had 1,500, but I wasn't sure if that was correct. Thank you. Hi. Sure. Very good. Yeah. Um, so what's the probability? What's the likelihood of seeing a lynx? These guys are nocturnal. They come out at night. They hunt in the evening and the morning and they are incredibly secretive. So again, like the bear, they are solitary. I have a funny video on my phone of what happens when two lynx meet who don't like each other. <laughs> you can come ask me for that later. Um, it's very, very, very rare to see them. You will almost only ever see the tracks and the kill remains. Because they're cats, they have these nice dainty claws and teeth that are quite fine, needle-like. You'll tend to find bones and things left without scratches and marks on them. The bear, We'll destroy them, the wolf will break them, the lynx won't damage the bones. So you don't see the animal really. A few lucky people will have, but it's very exciting to find the tracks and we'll come on to them later. I suspect so. It's probably also because it's uh, quite a thick tail. They'll have quite a lot of control over it. Maybe it's for balance, but I don't see a relation to a particular reason why. The wolf. Who likes the wolf? Everyone likes the wolf. Everyone hopefully likes all of the animals, but I like the wolf, so I'm kind of biased. How big's a wolf? Who's got a dog? Next question, who's got a dog? A few, a few. The wolf's probably bigger than your dog. In fact, I'd be very impressed if your dog is as big as a wolf. So this wolf is it's pretty big. It's not massive, it's pretty big. They can weigh anywhere up to, and the biggest wolves recorded in Sweden have been about 50 kilograms. So again, I'm 75, that's that much of me. That much, no. Um, big animals. They have, here we go. Again, not passing this around due to size. Oh no, someone's put it in the sand. <laughs> cool, we're gonna pass this, Kev, I'm sorry if you get sand on you. Um, we don't tend to put these paws in the sand print, in the sand pit, but we can have a look at how the paws look in the sand pit later. So, big dog-like paws. The claws are quite um, blunt, they're quite strong. They're used for gripping when they're running on the ice because these guys are still awake. The difference between the wolf and these guys, other than the fact this is a dog, that's a cat, 
and this is an Ursus, which is the bear family. Um, the dog, sorry, the wolf is a social animal. It has friends, it has a pack, it has family. Within Sweden, they only really find family group packs. They don't tend to find packs with strangers in, um, with the exception of bachelor packs, but they're not like the big packs of America where you can have 12 to 30 wolves. In Sweden, we're looking at five to seven wolves in a pack. The females mate, and in the spring, early spring, so soon, they will go to... <laughs> Whew, I've just realised I've not... I always forget. <coughs> so, in the early spring, about now, the female will be going into den. They, she'll pick a hole under a rock or under a tree where she'll give birth. In about three to four weeks, she'll move with the cubs. The cubs are born with their eyes closed and hairless. They're born altricial, which means they develop after birth. Once the cubs have opened their eyes and started moving, they'll move to a bigger, more elaborate, warmer, nicer den. They actually have two dens. I didn't know this until last week. So, what does the wolf eat? It's not an obligate carnivore like the lynx. It can eat other stuff, but it predominantly eats meat. 80-95% of its diet is meat. It can eat other stuff just like your dog um, and in the summer when the, ki the cubs have all grown up they're bigger they're now full-sized wolves they're still learning what to do in life but they're bigger they start hunting bigger prey so what does the wolf in Sweden eat what animal which massive animal which makes no sense whatsoever for anything to try and kill does the wolf like to try and eat sorry Elk, moose, yes, yes. yep. Um, absolutely, moose is the primary prey. Their paws are bigger than your dog's. If you find a, a paw print in the ground, which looks like a wolf or a dog print, and it's less than nine centimeters, it's not a wolf. If it's bigger than nine centimeters, it has the chance of being a wolf, but you still can't tell at that point. You have to follow the tracks for a little while. Now, what we do is when we find tracks of any animal we want to understand more about, we don't follow the animal. We go the other way. Go backwards. Don't follow the animal. Um, ask me later about my friend who followed a bear the wrong way. Um, yes, it was enlightening. You have to follow them for a little while. And what you're looking for is the strides, how far each step takes. So it doesn't work on me. I'm human. I've got two legs. But you're effectively measuring from one leg to where that leg touches the floor again in the future. So with these things, it's four steps. You're measuring that distance. That's called the strides. For a wolf, two meters. My Alsatian, who's a 33 kilogram, seven centimeter poor white Alsatian, is roughly 160. So she, you know, she's big for a dog. These guys are much bigger still. And if you get that sort of information, you keep following them, you might find where they sleep, you might find hair, you might find poo, which is another very important thing to look for. You can start to identify if it's a wolf or a dog, though it's very difficult to do. Within Uplands, we have six wolves. We have a pack of five up at Glamson, and we have a single lone female at Flo Flor Flornana. Thank you, Flornana. Um, Yes, so that's the Wolves of Uplands. Has anyone any questions? And we'll quickly go on to, no, we covered the um, tracking backwards, which is the important thing. You always go the other direction from the animal. You don't want to stress the animal. You don't want to hurry it. You don't want to scare it. You also don't want to catch up with it because these things eat things. Um, and also the importance of that is if you do follow an animal, and you find a lynx, what you're likely to see is that. The flash of a tail, just, that's it, it's gone. With a wolf, you might hear some howls, very cool, and then you just see a flash as it runs away. Whereas if you follow it backwards, work out where it slept, what it's been eating, find a carcass, find some poo, look at the diet. You can learn so much more and you've not um, upset the animal. So that's kind of the important thing about this is yes we want to look at tracks and we can as I said in the sand pit we have the guide up there 
And yes, uh, and you don't want to upset the animal. Hi. How common is this to have a lone female? She has previously had a, another female living with her. Um, and I think she had a male mate at one point, didn't I she? I if the other female was just east of her. They had their own they had, territory, I believe. Hmm. They were close together, so next to each other. But um, yeah, hmm. could take a few years to, to form but packs, yeah. Especially in this area, because, you know, you know, There's not that many. Yes, that would be nice, that would be good. Would be exciting. Things like that are very much an animal personality okay. thing, but I'll chat more with you about that afterwards. Could take weeks, could take, could take a couple of years. So. Yeah. Cool. I think I've given and said what I need to. If you've got any questions, I'm going to be here for a while. Absolutely, we can use a sand pit. We can come stroke the furs. Please come stroke the furs. This one is so soft, you won't believe it. Um, thank you for coming. It's been great having you. Thank you.